Hey YouTube, uh, Rob back again with another video. Uh, so it's that time of the month again. Time to do my uh, end of the month uh, DVD Blu-ray update for what are we? January 2015. I think I'm still getting used to it being a uh, new year. Um, first of all, I'll mention I'm actually running a competition at the moment, uh, which I'll leave a link to that to that uh, contest video below if you want to enter it and have to win the prize. Uh, here's the prize. Um, so this is the Lego Movie sort of special edition. Uh, comes with a little sort of figurine and sort of plastic sort of Lego head, and plus the movie, of course, uh, is in there as well. Uh, I mean, if you don't, if you sort of win, you're interested in this, so we can always work something out. I'm sure I can find something else to uh, give you a gift voucher or something. But uh, that was sort of the prize I sort of uh, had in mind. I think it's been running for a few weeks, so I think it might extend out for press for another week. Uh, I think it's going to be the 6th, I think, of February. I think, I think it's going to end officially. I'll leave a link. I'll leave a little somewhere there. It'll say what the exact date is. But it um, be about a week from now. So uh, anyway, so that's the prize and the competition. I'd love to hear your, your responses uh, to my questions. Uh, anyway, so we're getting to the, the movies. Uh, start with Blu-rays. Uh, this is actually a film I actually did talk about, uh, or I sort of showed in my last video, and I hadn't sort of gone to watching it uh, at the time. Um, that was uh, The Turning, a sort of Australian uh, film. I think it's sort of 13 different directors and they sort of did, each did sort of, you know, like the sort of 13 sort of short sort of uh, sort of features sort of thing. And, um, you know, I sort of said I was sort of looking forward to uh, giving it a watch and, you know, seeing what it was like. Uh, so I have sort of, yeah, obviously got around to watching it, obviously. Cause that's the whole point of me showing it. Um, and it was, yeah, it wasn't that great, I didn't think, <laughs> if I've got to be honest. Um... Yeah, I didn't really like sort of thirty different stories, and there's probably a couple there that I thought weren't, weren't sort of too bad and nice sort of ideas and the stories, and uh, but they're just I don't know they were too short. I mean, I suppose I can't expect a movie about shorts to be you know have a full in depth storyline, I suppose, for each of the shorts. But um, I just sort of felt that a lot of stories were just they were sort of you know started to get a little bit interesting, and then they just they just sort of end like they wouldn't. Somebody didn't even seem to have a conclusion. They just sort of you know, cut to black, and that, that was it. Um, so, I don't know, it wasn't, I didn't think it was all that great, really. Uh, some nice sort of images to it, that nice sort of uh, cinematography and stuff like that in it, and uh, some, you know, good acting in it, and some interesting stories, but they just, they didn't sort of, I don't know, I didn't sort of feel fulfilled with, you know, with a lot of the stories. Uh, anyway, that's, that's the turning. Okay, now on to a, a, another Australian film, a film I did actually quite... Uh, like a lot more. Um, I actually got really quite enjoyed this one actually. Uh, this is um, Tracks. I was watching um, uh, Dr. Hasline, Kevin's uh, top 10 movies of 2014. He sort of had this uh, on his list. So I, I had sort of heard a little bit about the film and um, you know, it did sort of sound interesting. So I, you know, based on his recommendation, I did sort of um, uh, manage to pick it up. And yeah, as I said before, I actually quite enjoyed this one. I thought it was. Um, uh, really good. Um, I think it does perhaps get perhaps mixed reviews maybe though. Some people sort of said it was um, rather boring, <laughs> which I suppose I can, I don't know, maybe see because it's, it's a sort of film, um, essentially the film is sort of based on a true story about um, this girl here, what's her name? Robin Davidson. So back in I think the 1970s I think it was and she decided to um, sort of do this big sort of trek across uh, sort of outback Australia, out in the desert. I think she travelled like 27,000 kilometres, uh, you know, pretty much by herself, apart from her three camels and uh, her little dog. And, and yeah, she just sort of decided to go on this big sort of trek all by herself. And, um, you know, a lot of her friends and family thought she was absolutely crazy. The other aspect, I suppose, of the film is she doesn't sort of have uh, enough, sort of, enough sort of money to sort of, you know, sort of fund this trip. She sort of sent a letter to uh, National Geographic and... Uh, got them to sort of help sort of fund the trip and um, sort of one of the con conditions was that she sort of had to sort of uh, had this uh, photographer sort of you know tag along I suppose and uh, shoot photos for the magazine type thing and um, we don't sort of see him necessarily he isn't sort of necessarily there all the time he's sort of uh, he, she sort of travels for like a, a week by herself and then at certain spots along the trip uh, he sort of comes and meets her there in his car and you know takes a few snaps and then goes away and, you know, so they met up again, you know, another week later, you know, type of thing. Um, she doesn't necessarily like that idea, thinks, thinks it's a, you know, what's a sort of, you know, do it all by herself and, 
you know, not being sort of interrupted by this, you know, annoying photographer type of thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, yeah, it's, a, it's a film about, you know, this girl by herself out in the desert. I mean, it sort of sounds like it might be a, a rather boring movie and I guess in some ways why some people might say it's, you know, a boring movie, I guess. Um, but I actually quite liked it. I thought it was a, a really good journey and um, just, yeah, very sort of, I don't know, a beautiful film set in a bland desert, I suppose. Yeah, but I thought it was actually, yeah, quite good. Um, yeah, so that's the tracks. Uh, but that's on to another film that was uh, came out this year. A uh, film that was a bit of um, not very well received, I don't think. Um, that was uh, Godzilla, um, which yeah, I'm sure a lot of people have already have seen this movie and sort of you know read the reviews and seen the reviews, and uh, a lot of people didn't necessarily think it was uh, that great. Um, and I mean, I sort of found it. You know, I remember sort of being in the cinema and I was watching it for the first time and. You know, sort of thinking to myself, this is a, a boring movie. <laughs> um, but I was sort of curious though, I was sort of, well, you know, why'd they make this Godzilla, you know, you know, it's supposed to be really action packed, well, I would have thought, you know, rather exciting sort of film and, you know, make it rather boring. I thought that was actually, I don't know, I was sort of a bit uh, confused by that, I suppose, in, in some ways. Um, so I wanted to sort of perhaps re watch it and, you know, perhaps, you know, give it a second viewing and, you know, see what my thoughts were on it. Um, you know, because we don't sort of see much of Godzilla. I mean, I think that was sort of the major complaint a lot of people had. Um, you know, he sort of turns up sort of, you know, three quarters into the movie and, you know, I think there's going to be this big sort of, you know, battle scene with him and the uh, the other two sort of alien creature things and he just sort of is there for a couple, couple of seconds and then he just sort of, you know, goes away again and, he, you know, we don't sort of see him, you know, we're sort of left uh, waiting to see him again for another... I don't know, half an hour or so, you know. I mean, the the, the conclusion is pretty good, obviously, because Godzilla come, you know, actually could do, to sort of see him and, you know, he causes some havoc, you know, type of thing. Um, but yeah, it's just, you know, I suppose some people sort of said that I haven't sort of seen the original movie, but people have sort of said that that's what happens in the original movie—that you know we don't sort of see much of Godzilla and, you know, not till the end sort of thing. And the same thing could probably be said for like Alien and, and Jaws. I mean, we don't sort of see those monsters. You know, show up, do we have to sort of wait, but the suspense sort of grows, and then we do eventually do sort of see him. And um, I just feel there's no sort of suspense, there's no sort of build up, I don't think, really. Uh, at least, I don't know, I didn't sort of find uh, that much build up. Um, I mean, overall, it's you know, it's not a bad film, I don't think. It's it's just a bit sort of underwhelming and um, not that very exciting, I think. I think probably the first half is probably better than the second half, I think. And you know, Brian Cranston was. You know, good to sort of see on screen, and his his character was quite interesting. And um, but then we don't sort of see him do it for the rest of the film. So, um, but yeah, I mean, it was I wouldn't say it was a terrible film or a bad film. It was just a bit sort of uh, and underwhelming, and I just think it could have been a, a better film. I think uh, so. That's Godzilla. Uh, onto an animated uh, one here now. Um, but uh, Monsters University. Uh, I watched this one the other day, and uh, I actually didn't mind this one actually. Um, I I just I've sort of seen the first one, and I thought that was yeah I don't know I wasn't too too keen on the first one really. I thought it, I thought it was alright, um, but I just I don't know again I perhaps just perhaps a bit underwhelmed perhaps by it. Uh, so I think I probably did like this one uh, a little bit more I think. Um, so it's just sort of about sort of the main two uh, characters here, and this is sort of like a prequel to the first movie, and this is sort of about them sort of meeting. Uh, in, in sort of uh, university for the first time and uh, them trying to get into scare school, you know, uh, trying to sort of uh, graduate that. Um, but yeah, I thought it was actually, yeah, it wasn't too bad, though, you know, nice sort of animation to it and uh, some nice jokes and, uh, yeah, I don't know, just a fun movie and, yeah, it was good. So that's uh, Monsters University. Next film is actually, I think, a film technically from uh, 2013, but I think it didn't sort of come... Australia, I don't think, or at least didn't come out uh, on, you know, on DVD or Blu-ray till uh, 2014, so I'm sort of classing it as a, uh, you know, 2014 movie. Um, so it's uh, Dallas Buyers Club, which um, is a sort of film I didn't sort of know that much about. I had sort of heard, you know, it's won a lot of uh, awards, and a lot of people were sort of uh, you know, raving about it uh, last year, and um, it's a film I sort of, yeah, I 
had heard of the views about it, but I hadn't necessarily, I didn't sort of know all that much about it. I wasn't you know, quite sure what the storyline was. Um, and I thought maybe it might have been perhaps a film about sort of football or something, or, you know, Della Spires Club is in, you know, I don't know, buying a football team or something. That's what I, I don't know, I just, I don't know where I got that idea from, but uh, it's definitely not a film about that. It's a totally different, uh, you know, subject matter. Um, actually, you've got uh, Matthew McConaughey here, uh, playing a really um, great role, I think. I think some really great acting by him, I thought. He was uh, really good in the, the role, I thought. Uh, essentially, his, his character, Ron, is a bit of a sort of a, a wild man, uh, you know, smokes and drinks and, uh, you know, is in the rodeo and uh, sort of um, you know, rides bulls, you know, sort of thing. Um, but anyway, sort of one day, he sort of, he sort of hurt, you know, bull riding and goes to to the hospital and uh, they're sort of telling him he's, that he's got um, HIV, you know, and he kind of, you know, he says, you know, what are you talking about? That's, you know, that's for, you know, for gay people, you know, homosexual men, that's, that's for fags, you know. Um, which I suppose was the, you know, the you know, the thinking at the time, I suppose, back in the 80s. Um, so, you know, he doesn't sort of believe it and, um, you know, but he does sort of over the next, you know, few weeks or few days, he does sort of start to, you know, realise he's not, not that well, and he thinks, well, maybe the, you know, there might be some truth in this. And um, so, it's just sort of about him, I suppose. Over that, you're sort of given like three days to live or something, but he sort of, he sort of, um, you know, wants to try and find a you know, cure for it. So he there is a sort of a drug out there uh, approved by the government, um, which you know all the HIV patients are taking. But it's his research sort of says that it's you know, it's not doing anything. It's just a load of you know. Yeah, a lot of crap sort of thing. But there is another drug that's uh, not necessarily illegal, but it's not hasn't been necessarily approved, uh, you know, by the medical people. Um, so, he, so he just sort of you know goes down to Mexico and gets this drug and, uh, you know, well for, first of all for himself to you know try and cure himself. But then he sort of realizes well, there's a lot of other people in the same uh, position. So he sort of ends up sort of uh, sort of selling it sort of thing and, um, you know, trying to help other people, you know, get well sort of thing and, um. It's just, yeah, it's just sort of about him, uh, you know, sort of battling this, you know, HIV and, uh, you know, the people around him and uh, what he's trying to do sort of thing. Uh, I think it's based on a true story, um, but I have sort of heard that, it, you know, this film's, you know, nothing like the actual uh, true story. I think it's actually based on, this is actually based on a sort of a short sort of, um, sort of a, um, I don't know, like a, a piece in a, in a magazine sort of thing. It wasn't necessarily a book it was based on. It was just based on this very sort of short, uh, pretty sure like a, a magazine article. I'm pretty sure I read, I read, I read that somewhere. Um, but yeah, just a really good film, I thought. It was a, a bit of a sort of a longer sort of watch, about two hours or something. But um, I don't know, I just really liked it. I thought it was actually um, really good. And it really just sort of, just for Matthew Bacone, it was really good, I thought. And really a great sort of character to sort of, you know, uh, root for and, um, just, yeah, just a really nice little drama piece, I suppose. Just really, yeah, just a well-made movie and, I don't know, really good. <laughs> I don't know what to sort of say. But, yeah, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was actually uh, a really good film and I can, you know, sort of see why people are uh, giving it so much praise. So that's uh, Dallas Buyers Club. Uh, to a film classic from 1955, starring uh, James Dean or Jimmy Dean. Uh, that's, um... East of Eden, uh, black and white film. Um, I have sort of had this one in my collection for a little while, I just haven't sort of got around to uh, watching it. Um, but I actually quite enjoyed this one. I thought it was actually uh, really good. Uh, probably the only thing I'd... It was a bit, it was a bit long now, I thought, and uh, it did sort of get a bit stretched out, I thought. And, uh, but I think the actual subject matter, though, I thought was actually quite good. And it was a really good story, I thought. And I'm uh, pretty sure this is actually his first film, I think, too. He's sort of his very first sort of uh, breakout role. Um, it's actually sort of about sort of I suppose a father and his two sons, I suppose, and um, yeah, you know, sort of got the, the two sons are pretty much you know opposites. Like uh, Jimmy Dean here, he's sort of he's sort of the bad son, and his brother sort of the good son, and uh, he's you know some of his father you know likes the other you know the other son because he's you know a good boy you know sort of thing. Whereas James Dean's a bit sort of all over the place sort of thing. Um, since you're sort of about sort of, um, the, the father sort of tells his sons that, that their mother died, you know, when they were both sort of born and, um, James Dean sort of finds out through a, a guy in a pub, 
as you do, um, that the mother's still alive and she's actually only living, she still lives in the next sort of county over sort of thing and uh, she's actually a prostitute sort of thing. So, um, you know, he, he sort of goes over there to, to, to try and find, you know, try and find his mother and, you know, find out, you know, why why she sort of left him, uh, left, you know, her, the father and, you know, her, t her two sons, you know, sort of thing. And then, um, yeah, just sort of about, um, both, sort of both, both, both sort of both about the mother and the father, I suppose. You know, you sort of find out what his mother's been doing and his father's a businessman, but he's sort of, you know, lost a lot of money and going broke and, uh, you know, James Dean, you know, he wants to be, you know, I think he wants to be a good son, but he's, he's just sort of finding it hard to, uh, you know, please his father and, you know, sort of thing. And, um, yes, yeah, I'm probably not explaining this very well, but, um, it just, yeah, as I said just about, you know, the father of the two sons and the mother sort of thing and, um, about their life sort of thing, I suppose. Um, but yeah, I thought it was actually really good. I actually did quite like, like the movie. Uh, just as I said before, just perhaps just a little bit too long, I think, and it, did sort of get a bit sort of stretched out, and I uh, also thought the female lead was quite good too. Um, well, I should do the two female leads: the 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 mother and um, the, the the other brother's girlfriend too. I thought I thought she was quite good. I'm not sure what sure what her name was. Uh, anyway, I'll put it up there somewhere. Um, but yeah, I thought yeah, really good performances. I thought uh, throughout the movie and good story um, and just yeah a good film so that's uh, Eastern Eden. Uh, last of all a DVD which I sort of was a bit of a blind buy. Um, I, I wasn't sure whether I'd sort of heard it was a good film or not or um, well anyway it's called uh, Triangle. You know, it stars Melissa George and uh, she was an uh, Australian. She's you know she's been a a soap opera called Home and Away. I think so. I was perhaps been a bit of a fan of her and uh, have sort of followed her career and uh, just you know part time. So I'm not I'm not sorry, <laughs> obsessed fan or anything. Um, but um, so I just wanted to pick this up and sort of see what it was like. And um, I think she's definitely Melissa George. I think is definitely a. Um, she's I think she sort of works hard for her roles. I think she she she's in a lot of sort of low budget. Uh, type movies, you know, but I think she does sort of pick films that are, have you know interesting sort of storyline to them, and uh, she does sort of work hard. And um, even though she hasn't necessarily been a like a massive success, like you know, like a, you know, Golden Globe winner or anything like that, or in you know huge, uh, she's been a couple you know big blockbuster movies, sort of thing. But she she works consistently, I think, and she does sort of choose roles that I think are um, you know quite interesting and probably you know. Off, off topic there a bit. Uh, anyway, back to the film. Um, this is actually really good. I actually quite enjoyed this one. I thought it was actually really good. Uh, sort of starts off as just sort of you know, average sort of movie, I suppose. Um, Mr. George here and her friends go on a sailing trip, and uh, as you can guess, the uh, you know sort of the, the yacht sort of obviously you know runs into trouble and uh, capsizes, and uh, out of nowhere, this big sort of ocean liner just appears out of nowhere. You know, uh, very much like you know ghost ship or something um so they you know they board this uh you know big ship and obviously there's the no one there sort of thing and the film's just sort of about you know having the next i suppose um which you know it does sort of sound like a very sort of you know typical average sort of movie and, um and the start is like that i suppose as i just described but it does sort of take a bit of a different direction um you know after that sort of point once i sort of get onto the ship sort of thing and uh, a few sort of, you know, twists and turns and, um, yeah, just really good, I thought, really, I don't want to spoil the, you know, what, what happens, I suppose, but, um, the film, you sort of go into IMDb and there's a lot of different sort of people's opinions on what happens in the movie and, you know, um, yeah, yeah, I won't spoil it though. Um, but yeah, I just thought it was actually, yeah, really good, sort of a, a sort of a low budget type movie, but it was still, you know, very well executed, I thought, and, uh, definitely just sort of make you think, you know, about what's happening in the movie. Um, yeah, let's try and, I don't want to perhaps go on too much, but uh, that was actually quite good, I thought, I really enjoyed this one. Um, yeah, so that's it, thanks for watching, um, this film's off, you know, most of sort of buy recently and, uh, got around to watching, uh, don't forget my competition, I'll leave a link to that below so you can win this, uh, if you want to enter it. Um, yeah, so that's it, thanks for watching, and yeah, I'll see you very soon, bye.